Shalom, dear friend. Wonderful to be with you. We are in the hill of Jerusalem. And I tell you, it's just so amazing. It's the 50 year of Jerusalem and something is happening. I thought, oh, you know, it will come. But no, now that the time has passed of the 50 years, it's like there is a buzz. There is something happening. The people are coming back. But it's not just that. The land is rejoicing. There is, the atmosphere is different. I tell you, it's just amazing. And so we really want, we are bringing you what's happening here in the land with the people and also with the language, which is so, uh, it's the treasure. And again, today in the studio, we have David. Thank you, David, again for coming. It's great to be back. <coughs> it's wonderful. David Nekrutman is the executive director of CGCUC which is uh, the Center for Jewish and Christian and its cooperation and understanding. So it's like a dialogue that's happening between Jews and Christian and is really happening. It is. And David, you've been this week, there was a prophetic, the, it was amazing even the topic of it, prophetic, wait a prophecy minute. Prophecy in the news. That's it, prophecy in the news. Which and was, it was uh, sponsored by Breaking Israel News with Rabbi Tuli Weiss, mm -hmm. and we were one of the co-sponsors of the event, mm -hmm. and it took place at our headquarters mm -hmm. at the Bible Lands Museum in Jerusalem. So it was Jews and Christians. Jews and Christians coming together. Looking to at the... Pr looking at the prophetic events that are happening currently from Israel, mm -hmm. and specifically Jerusalem, course we're celebrating the 50 years of the liberation of Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria mm -hmm. okay so when we talk about 50 years it's not only Jerusalem it's also Judea and Samaria and uh, also that they have one hand they have the Bible and and or one eye on a Bible and the one eye open to look at what's happening right, because uh, God doesn't stop writing revelation mm -hmm. after the canonization of Scripture we still have to look at today's events through a biblical paradigm. And I think what the conference did was we found a common, uh, I guess, a common anchor where Jews and Christians can come together because we will both believe in prophetic events being in fulfillment right now mm -hmm. like never before. Mm -hmm. And that coming together also anchors the relationship into another chapter in a more positive way than it was in the past. For me, like we arrived to, we weren't really so prepared to go, we're like invited and we came, but like to be in the atmosphere where Jewish and Christian were together, they, there was a, a peace, funny enough, there was a joy, and we were looking not just for what's happening now, but like in the future. And I think the next 50 years, we are going to see amazing things happening. Um, and, and I think the, the Jewish people, their, their identity is changing. And I was speaking with a friend a few days ago saying, look, you know, when Israel was made as a, as a country again, it was socialism, it was the kibbutzim time and all, but now it's different. So yes, we went from being the pioneers and looking at the land agriculturally and building up these uh, kibbutzim, sort of a collective farm where everyone gets to share in the produce and all the monies are equally distributed. Uh, doesn't mean there wasn't other areas in Israel that didn't that were beyond that model. You have something called the moshav, which were more of an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and you were given a piece of land and you worked that land. My father-in-law was working as a farmer on his land, uh, not that far away from here, about an hour away from where we're broadcasting. Um, and then you have people involved in capitalism as well. We had all different models back then. Obviously, the main thing the thrust that was happening in the beginnings, pre-statehood and following statehood, was definitely this thing of connecting to the land. But now, you're almost 70 years into being in the state of Israel, and what we're able to do is look at modernity and seeing that our best asset at the end of the day is right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's between right here, this brain, mm -hmm. the Jewish brain, and looking at it and seeing how we can be a light to the, other, to the nations by using this brain, this God-given gift of ours, and look what we're doing for the world. You can't, everything that you have electronically right now for you to communicate, 
order anything online was influenced by some type of Israeli technology. So we went from farmers mm -hmm. to literally changing the global lands landscape of how we actually communicate with one another. And for me, I think it's something beautiful, and you are speaking again about it during the, the conference, like the, the Jewish people have been through so many traumatic things that um, there was a time of, of healing, but I think maybe not all of it is done, but I think there is a lot of healing already has been, has been already done. And like there is, we are going into a new era. Is there a different chapter? In, and so let's me, let me explain what we mean by healing and why it was actually, why did I actually address this topic? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we look at events and some, some people like to go ahead and say, this is the event mm -hmm. that something massive is gonna happen mm -hmm. and we're all looking forward to it and then it passes, right? So there's this fervor that's yeah, created. Yeah. And what's missing in that equation mm -hmm. is the people themselves. So there's a divorce for some reason between the event and the people who are experiencing the event mm -hmm. and not allowing the people themselves to come to terms with that event and what it means nationally to us. Christianity, I would say specifically in the evangelical world, looks at itself from an individualistic point of view, meaning since salvation is indiv individual, mm -hmm. Uh, there is not a sense of when you talk about the body of Christ that we're looking at all the 30,000 movements of churches coming together as one and you're all connecting in that way. In Judaism, we do connect collectively not as only a religion, but also as an ethnicity, as a nationality as well. We all connect that, even though religiously or not religiously, you come from an Eastern European background, Middle Eastern background, there is that connectedness that we have as a people that I think is very unique among any other nations. We're both religion and an ethnicity. And I think it's very hard for people who don't have both to understand that. And as a people, we went through almost 2,000 years mm -hmm. of horrible things done to us. And then all of a sudden, a nation is born in a day. Yes. Right? That's the fulfillment of mm -hmm. prophecy. Mm -hmm. And we have to come to terms of what that means to us Not as a national people. How do we deal with where we were just three years ago for a third of jury being in the gas chambers of Auschwitz and other concentration camps and just being killed uh, to running a country? Mm -hmm. And we don't have the most friendly neighbors on our borders, at that, especially in that particular point of time. And now I have to go ahead and govern which is the fulfillment <laughs> of who we are as the Jewish people. The f actualization of the fullness of Judaism has to be done in this land, okay? There is a difference between Jews practicing Judaism yes. outside of Israel of a sovereign Jewish state than in what it is inside a sovereign state. There is, it's just there is a difference. And now I have to govern. How do I do that? I and what can, when, when, it, hit, it hits me, maybe because you are speaking about it and, and also because it's the 50 years and saying, okay, how was it before? But it's like suddenly you come out of the ashes of, of the Holocaust, which is a bit like you can say also like in Ezekiel, is the dry bones and right, you dry can bones see all this. Coming, exactly. Right. Yeah. But there's a process that the dry bones goes exactly. through. Exactly, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, can the bones live? Definitely. But the process for, the, for them to live again normally and I think that's the underlying word, mm -hmm. takes time. Mm -hmm. uh, because we, we, uh, because we're, we're in post-traumatic syndrome right now. And I think still in post-traumatic syndrome, less so because you have Israeli-born children yeah. who are not growing, didn't grow up with the diaspora mentality, or I'd say ghetto mentality, in the sense that I have to always constantly look over my shoulder for the next Holocaust to happen. I know, the children here, are just amazing. Right, the They're children, especially now you have almost a fourth generation coming out since the, the birth of the state. Uh, you can't compare childhood of today to a childhood of someone growing up during, during the war years. And that is something that I believe is not even entertained or considered within Christianity on how prophetic events unfolding relates to the people themselves. Mm -hmm. 
And if you want to build up a relationship in a very positive way, you have to allow us as a people to go through our catharsis. Yeah. And by rushing a timetable mm -hmm. and going beyond the people, in a way, doesn't help to foster a relationship to build up between Jews and Christians. Mm -hmm. It's great for an Israel cause. Mm -hmm. Look what's happening. Something's happening here. We've got to get together. And the 50 years of the Jerusalem mm -hmm. celebration is, I think, a great example. There was a movie, there's a movie by Christian Broadcasting Network, mm -hmm. which I had the privilege and honor to, be, to attend uh, its premiere in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And there was a moment where they liberated Jerusalem, they're at the Western Wall, mm -hmm. and everyone is praying, but one is praying a supplication and forgiveness prayer, mm -hmm. and his comrade is saying, why are you praying that? Pray Psalms 113 to 118, pray the Hallel. And he says, "How?" I'm not there emotionally. Mm -hmm. My brothers in arms just were died. just died. Yeah. And I'm dealing with that emotion. And that was a great way for me to say, wait, wait, wait. We, are, we as a people are still going through that. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of people during the 50 years, mm -hmm. even when we had Jerusalem, that died for, for the continuation of a sovereign Jewish state. I never understand before why like they had the Temple Mount and, and they give it back like a few days after. And for me, I was like, why? I can't understand. But now I totally understand. It's like almost like a, a beautiful present who is giving and the child has been abused so much that he can't, he, he can't have these amazing things. And when, when you work with orphans, you can't give them. You have to be tough with them at the beginning because if you give them too, too much, they can't cope emotionally. And he does that, and he's like, okay, 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 okay. I, 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 you don't know how much he's touching me, saying, leave them alone, which is exactly what you yeah, are saying. Yeah, that's what I was saying at the conference. You have to let us go through our own process. Please mm -hmm. don't rush the process, because if you want us to be who we are mm -hmm. as a light to the other nations, then we have to go through this. Mm -hmm. So is it again all about, because you are a nation, but we are also a yeah, religion? Is, we are, we're so a it's nation like and we're yeah. a religion and we're, it's this combination. We're governing at the same time, but we have to take in consideration mm -hmm. the minority popula population that lives with us. That's 20%. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you govern in an area where you are the Jewish majority? Mm -hmm. Our faith is the Jewish religion. Our s national anthem is a Jewish national anthem. Mm -hmm. Hatikva. Mm -hmm. It's based upon verses in the Bible, mm -hmm. yet there is people who don't affiliate with Judaism. How do I govern them? And that they feel part of being a citizen of the state. Mm -hmm. That's complicated, and we don't have much experience in that because for 2,000 years we were outside of our land, and we're new to this. Uh, so that's sort of how to govern that mm -hmm. is what you're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. So of course, one, you'll have groups that say, Let's build this third temple right now. You have other groups, well, why we're going to do that if it might be too explosive uh, on our, uh, literally, mm -hmm. could be explosive in a literal sense of the reaction from, from, the, from the radical Muslim community. I'm not saying all Muslims in Israel feel this way, mm -hmm. but you know, Jerusalem is ours. Uh, and I believe that it's the undivided capital of the Jewish people. And I'm okay that other religions and faiths and peoples live here. It's the testament to who we are as a people. We are supposed to go ahead and help out those who are, res who are says strangers in the land, but really means other nations, other peoples that are living in this land, and that we are supposed to not oppress them, but to love them. How do we do that under a biblical on the, uh, umbrella in the right way and that they, they feel it? And, yeah. and I think we're doing a pretty good job. We sometimes, you know, it doesn't always go the way we want it to go. Our intention is good, and I think for, for a model state, given the circumstances that we were given 70 years ago, and then 50 years ago of the stewardship of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. I really don't understand why the nations of the world are trying to marginalize us, and then we become the problem of everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I, there are people really who violate, really violate human rights, mm -hmm. and are not called on it, and yet we're the, we are the biggest violators of human rights. Tell me where 20% of your population, that you have members of the Knesset who actually don't like you too much, that say very nasty things about your religion and very nasty things, and they're a member of Knesset, a member of parliament. Uh -huh. All right. I saw sometimes, he's like, come on, guys, I know that there is, you need to 
give like it's a democratic system, but like where is the limit where they have to, if they are working against you, how can you they be part of you? All right. So this uh, is not easy for the minority population, who believe some believe that you need a complete Islamic, mm -hmm. pan Arabism place, and this Israel interrupts that space geography from happening. And how do you relate to this now that Jews are running the country? There is a country called the State of Israel. You know, listen, the it's Palestinian Authority, close. with all due respect, we still don't have Israel on their maps in their classrooms. We've done, we've done some programs. I know you've done some programs, so, and yet we, we say Palestinian Authority. We say, uh, a lot of people say two-state solution. We, uh, people are advocating in Israel for a Palestinian state. I'm still waiting on the other side on certain things. And we will see in the 50 years how Israel is doing for, we, we, we know, we hope, we know what is written in the Bible. Yeah, the end story is there, it's clear. How we get to the end story is very important as well. And to rush an event uh, without the people going through what they need to go through and come to terms with who they are. So all this is based upon chapter 30 in the book of Deuteronomy, which is really what I was pointing to and alluding to. If you take the book of Deuteronomy away, which is our national narrative, mm -hmm. the farewell speeches of Moses, mm -hmm. and if you go to chapter 30, 31 and 32, those are very important chapters to understand any other prophecy of Ezekiel, Hosea, uh, Isaiah and all that, uh, all the other prophetic things that are supposed to be happening very, very soon or have happened. So you were speaking about this Deuteronomy 30. I think we, we, we can go a bit deeper in it because there is so much there. And I know when we were listening to you and I listened to the broadcast again to pick up the depth of it. And again, we were doing it in the Bible study yesterday, Christian Jews and Christian yesterday. So we, we dig in it, and I think it's very important. And again, when, you are, when we are reading it, you have it in English and you have it in Hebrew, and suddenly you see that the translation is not right. Like, here is voice is so important on verse 2, and it wasn't there. Right. So it's so important that we could, again, that we connect with you, that you know the Hebrew language, you've been, like, in the Torah as Jewish people is what God gave you to, to build you up and after to give it to the nations. So this is so important that we have this connection now coming. So can you give us a bit again, like about yesterday, and there was mul, amal, mm -hmm. you know, all, all these right. things which is so important for us to understand as Christian. We want to connect with you and understand the, the Torah, the scriptures. So just to give you sort of a brief summary of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 1 through 10. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the sort of the ingathering of the nations mm -hmm. after the curses have been done, the blessings and the curses have been done, and there is a move. There are seven times the word shuv is mentioned or in some Hebrew. in Hebrew. That's it. In, yeah. So shuv, many people will translate as repent. It really means to turn. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot of people will so teshuva means to return, mm -hmm. right? But here is shuv to turn. It's the small little steps that are happening in the unfolding of this passage. Mm -hmm. And the first thing of the shuv is actually the people to themselves, which you don't get in the English translation. The people themselves are realizing, whoa, something is wrong with us nationally, mm -hmm. and we need to get back to basics. And part of that basics is listening to the voice of God and doing His will. But there's a word that's thrown in that we go, ad, Adonai. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, a word that's not translated into the English. Mm -hmm. It's until God. What do you mean, until God? You listen to God and you do His will. Period. Why throw in the word ah? Because we're not there yet. Because we went through all these traumatic experiences. We don't necessarily feel a loving connection, nationally speaking, to God because of the traumatic experiences. And the perfect example of that is you'll find a lot of people after the Holocaust of where was God during the Holocaust. And then you have some people say, I celebrated God in Auschwitz. I lighted the Hanukkah candle mm -hmm. in Auschwitz, and I'm going to celebrate God's hiddenness in this horrible, horrible atmosphere, but then celebrate God. But that's not the whole collective. The whole collective was wondering, how do we end up here? How do we get to this point? And then it was only three years later, then all of a sudden, 
the state of Israel is born, right? Um, but first we have to come to terms with self, the self-reflection. And then when we make that move... But again, as a nation. As a nation. Yeah. Everything is a nation, and yeah. not, it's not individuals. Mm -hmm. It's a whole nation coming together and going through this process. And we begin that little turn, even though it's not in its prepackaged form that we want it to be, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we want Jews to be prepackaged -pre Jews for Christians because I want you to be like this for me. And sometimes Jews want prepackaged Christians. I want you to do, be like this so I can interface with you. No, you're not there yet, and I'm not there yet, and that's the whole point of the process. And then all of a sudden, God then makes a move. Mm -hmm. And that move is really two turns at the same time. It's a turn to himself, mm -hmm. that when the people of Israel are exiled, God goes into exile. Mm -hmm. For 2,000 years, God is in exile. And when he returns the people to the land, and people say, whoa, how did this happen on my watch? then God's manifestation in his glory is more revealed mm -hmm. for people to acknowledge who he is. So there's a return to self by bringing the people back to the land. And it also shows the love for his people. The land itself is the love of God to the people. Mm -hmm. and so the people come back to the land and they go through another process again. There's prosperity mm -hmm. that's happening. And then finally, mm -hmm. On the seventh shuv, the seventh turn, it's El Hashem. It is to God, mm -hmm. with all your heart, with all your soul. And that, that term, all your heart and all your soul, comes from the Shema. You shall love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul. That love, finally, knowing who we are as a people, mm -hmm. going through that process, reconnecting with other nations who have not been so friendly with us, mm -hmm. and building on those and advancing those in a more positive way and the love of God, knowing that he really loves us and we do not need other nations' love to make our fulfillment happen mm -hmm. and we do not need to go to other gods to have our fulfillment as a nation. One God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So you just came back to the Lord. He came back to you. He came exactly. back to me and we're doing this beautiful waltz together. Uh, that will ultimately end up as the world will acknowledge, finally, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is what's happening right now in Israel and in Jerusalem, in this amazing nation. And this is, we can see God in present in this country. David, thank you again. Time, time is up. Time is up, up again. Okay. Time is up. And Bye. I hope that you really enjoy this program, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Shalom, dear friends. Today we are going to look at the name of Chava, which is the name of Eve. And is in Genesis 3.20. And it's Adam who was calling his wife, saying she will be called Chava because she is the mother of all life. So is Chava, and mother of all, of all life is M Kol Chai. So you see Chava and Chai. Chava is, is Eve, as we say and high is life. So we can see that the mother carry life. And obviously, every mother, when you, she gives birth, she's carrying for nine months a child, and she has the power, which is amazing power, that God has given us, that we can give life. There is also the name Chaya, which is the living one. So again, all these uh, names are, are put together. Uh, we can look also some other name, which is very interesting, which is Redva, which means joy. And again, you can see, like for Rava, when she is the mother who is going to bring joy to the world, she's bringing children, and, and is, is part of the experience that she's going to live. And again, when we speak about experience, uh, the name experience is Ravaya, which is again Rava. We saw the name, Anya is God. So again, it's a very strong name, experience. is like we can experience of creating. Uh, we have this creative ability to grant life to others. We are creating. We are nourishing. We are enhance all facets of life. This is what we are, our women. This is just amazing that we can see all this power who is given to us and uh, it's important that we know that we have this power in us, okay? 
Now, when we look, you know, remember we spoke also about how the letters carry things. Chava, you see, so Chet first. Chet is like again life. The number is eight, so it's like new life. We can bring new life. Is there? Vav is like the name six, which also represents man. So again, we give life to man. It's just there. It's just amazing. And and the last letter is He, and He. You can hear it's like a breath, and we can bring the breath of God in this man, and we are giving life. And this is our amazing name that God, sorry, it's not God who gives the name, it's Adam who gives this name to his wife to show who she will be. And she will be, we will look at that next week, that she will be helping him. So let us look again at the name that we look today is Chava, which is Eve. Chai, which is life, and they are all connected together. Chaya, which means living one. You have Redva, which is joy, and you have Ravaya, which is experience. And this is the name that we look today. I hope that you enjoy that, and we will see you again next week. Bye. David, thank you again for coming and to explain where we are at, uh, in, with Israel, with the nation. And I tell you, this is the Jubilee of Jerusalem and, like you said, Ju uh, Judea also and Samaria. We, we, we have to remember where the mountain of Israel is. And uh, this is just amazing. Thank you for coming. Sure. I hope that you enjoyed this program. If you want to look at more YouTube, don't forget you can go on our website and on the YouTube channel and you can look at different programs. I think it's important because sometimes you want to listen to the thing again because we speak about some important and... Deep <laughs> concepts <laughs> that you want to go ahead and just e go back. Did I get that correct? Exactly. And uh, from me and from David, bye and see you next week.